What is up, everybody? Welcome in to the Tuesday Track Talk podcast, Thanksgiving edition, um, episode number 10, uh, featuring your Three Stones pit crew. I am your gas man, Cameron. I am your tire changer, Cameron. I'm your jack man, Kellen. And uh, the crew has been uh, prepping uh, this last week, uh, doing a lot of research and uh, putting in some work. And so the crew is going racing. Um, and this week is going to be another another good episode. So uh, if you tuned in last week, uh, is what, what the crew is going to do is we just said, hey, unlimited funds, uh, pick a series, you're going racing, put together a crew, and uh, we'll see you at the track. So uh, that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to be covering on this episode. Uh, again, another fun little, going to be a fun episode, I think, uh, coming off of the paint scheme episode last week, which we had a, that, that was better that was than anticipated. Yeah, that was definitely better than anticipated. So, um, yeah, with that, um, as opposed to doing a, a Badger, you know, recap, I guess one quick question I had for you Thanksgiving week. What are some of the things uh, you guys are grateful for? I mean, we're talking about it. It's racing. (laughs) Um, No, I, you know, I just, we're, you, um, just time with family, you know, get to see your family and then hang out together. And at the end of the day, you get to have one really good meal. Uh, (laughs) Don't always get that too often. So uh, (laughs) just to, just to, just to hang out and chill and just, have a good meal and just enjoy people's company. Obviously we have our crew's annual get together coming up on Saturday morning. Um, so that'll be a doozy. That's going to be a hoot and a holler to start um, off with. Yeah. But, uh, no, just, just hanging out with family, honestly, and, and getting to see people you love. Yeah. I think we're all pretty family oriented family focused individuals here so yeah it's definitely getting to see everybody it's kind of those opportunities you can get everybody together and sit down and have a meal with everybody so you know i i'm I'm fortunate to be able to go to a a lot of races with my grandpa over the summer and obviously going home to see him and grandma as well and you know see mom and sister too i mean that's that's always nice like i said just to get everybody to sit down and and have a meal together yeah tire changer said there uh i think we're all pretty all all pretty family oriented so like i said grateful for the few days you know as we all know as we grow up it's hard uh as everybody's out doing their own thing getting jobs siblings in college mom and dad doing their thing hard to get everybody under one roof and uh enjoy a meal so yeah like you said I'm grateful um, just for, like you guys said, my my circle of people in my life is pretty pretty small and pretty tight-knit. So i um, grateful for all those people and um, looking forward to just a few days off, eating all I can, watching some NFL football and uh, going from there. But I guess follow-up question, quick hitter, favorite Thanksgiving food? Battle me some pumpkin pie. <laughs> What'd you say, Kellen? Mashed potatoes. <laughs> simple. I'm <a> simple guy. <laughs> yeah. Pumpkin pie. Give me give me the half the pie and I'll be set. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm not a pie eater, so no me either. Um, yeah, I don't know. If I did so I guess this kind of would be a hot take. I was gonna say my favorite food is probably stuffing, and then yeah. the uh, the other thing is I'm just not a big turkey guy. Like ham over turkey always. Mm, See, hot. I don't, I can't do ham. So like when Easter comes around, I can't do Easter ham. So give me turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big turkey eater. So Man. a piece of a good piece of dark turkey is really good. No, that's where you draw the line with me. I'm white. Give me white meat. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. I am a bash potatoes, but if I'm gonna go potatoes, cheesy potatoes. That's the okay. that's the bee's knees, as the kids would say. 
That's not a bad option. Yep. Uh, my my girlfriend's family's big. They're big into their cheesy potatoes instead of mashed potatoes. So, I get, I get it. Yeah. So people do that instead of just the traditional with a little slice of butter on the top and a little salt and pepper. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess That's... the other question is, you, you throw the corn in there too or no? Me? Anybody. Oh, yeah. You, you threw... No, oh, just, just potato. Corn. Yeah, corn's in there. No, I, think, I think potato. Not, not to bring this up, but I think it was at Easter last, was it this past spring or the year before? You just look over at Kellen, and he's just got a pile of potatoes, <laughs> corn, just mixing it all in. And then to top it off, we're like, oh, what is he concocting? He's cracking open a bun. And he's, I don't know if he put it on ham or not, but all of a sudden he's just putting this mashed potatoes and corn and gravy all mixed in one. On a bun. Oh my god! What is this guy eating? But well, so like a couple years ago, like I, I didn't, I wasn't able to make it home for Thanksgiving just with how the work schedule played out and like travel and all that. So it was me and actually a couple buddies. One of one of my buddies' families was like, "Yeah, anybody that can't make it, come on over." Super fortunate and really thankful for for that opportunity, but. Like I went up to the dessert line and I grabbed, like I said, I'm a big pumpkin pie guy. So like I grabbed the pumpkin pie, the pumpkin bar. There was like brownies up there. Like I grabbed one of each dessert that was up in the table, sat down and the guys, as I was getting my dessert, they put a wager on me as far as how long it would take me to eat said dessert. Oh I def, I definitely made some people upset with how fast I <laughs> ate it all. That's funny. Oh man, that's good. <clears throat> but food all day, and um, I guess one last caveat before we get into it. I guess one thing I'd say we're all grateful for is motorsports in racing. So, without further ado, um, let's dive into it. Um, first, we're going to touch on just kind of some last week. Uh, last weekend, we had a few races. Um, and we mentioned it on our preview last week. Um, the Gobbler. Uh, from what the a hunt name. The, the Hunt Front Super Dirt Series uh, put on the Gobbler. And uh, I was at Duck River Raceway. Um, so I don't know if you guys caught any any highlights um, of that. But um, did see Tanner English got the win. So um, that was really the only dirt late model race this past weekend, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, again, excuse me, their season's kind of wrapping down, and I think a lot of guys are kind of prepping for the the Gateway Nationals that are coming up here in, yeah. in December, too. So, These Yeah, so that's, only, that's only like two or three weeks, uh, what, three weeks away, probably? Three yeah. four weeks yeah. away? Yeah. That, and you got, you got to remember, that's Tanner English. That's his uh, uh, debut of the BMF. So <clears throat> a, a big win and a brand new chassis for him with, a, a decent a decent field of cars so who the, hell, who the hell all switched chassis earlier in the middle of the year and oh it was shepherd didn't he switch chassis too and before the season started he did yeah he did well, right, Somebody right, switched. Right, yep chris madden did yes yep madden did i know what like, like we were saying like mike marlar he switched teams you yep. due to some circumstances then he comes out of the gate just fucking Don't hammer it right out of the gate yeah. Yeah. Um mid season there. Um that was Skyline Motorsports. Uh Clanton and Bruning were running capital race car. And I think mid year they went to went to Longhorn. Um yep. and then somebody else did, but I can't for, I for they had a big reveal in the videos escaping my mind. But Anyways, yeah, so that was a dirt late model race. Uh, we kind of previewed last week and talked about it on last week's episode. So um, the Hunt the Front uh, Super Dirt Series is winding down. And um, Tanner English, who's had um, a pretty solid year, actually, um, for – Under the radar. Under the radar, I would say, especially he, for he's what just been, I, He's been in the mix. Correct. And, you know – I think that's a lot of time a lot of times with racing is hey are we are you just there at the end and somebody who's I would say just 
he got the boot from the 81 last year and got yeah. got into this ride and i would say the same thing like it it's been under the radar and he's been i would say surprisingly decent yeah he took care of his stuff that's the thing is <clears throat> it wasn't like you were flipping on races and he's losing it and smashing stuff up uh he was managing his equipment and you know, you look at it, he ran the World of Outlaws, and he had a decent year with the World of Outlaws. Um, so, a guy that could be, you could be on the lookout for him next year. Yeah, and like you said, with him switching chassis and really coming out strong in the first first go around with that with that chassis. Yeah, it's you know get comfortable now with them and start the year off strong once the once the new season comes around. For sure. Yeah, he finished he finished ninth in, in their points for the World of Outlaws last year. Okay. But yeah, yeah. somebody who's been I would say surpassing expectations. Um so um obviously dirt 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 late model season's winding down. Um if we don't have any other final thoughts on it, let's uh let's get into a little bit of F one, uh, first time on first time on the pod. Uh, hey, welcome I... to the welcome to the pod F one, and <laughs> uh, yeah, let's talk about that production. <laughs> it was a production. <laughs> oh man, you know I was kind of I was kind of thinking going into the week. I'm like, man, I know like Vegas is the the city of lights and and you know all all show and all that. I'm like, God, I just how much of a show is it going to be rather than a sporting event? And it's just, it didn't start off great. And like in the first, first pre or free practice is what they call it. Uh, but first practice eight laps or eight minutes into practice. And you have a manhole cover come up and just absolutely destroy one of the cars. It's just like, come yeah. on. <laughs> what a way to start the, start the weekend. <laughs> no kidding. Well, then they canceled the rest of practice. Oh it's my God. God. We're good. Oh yeah, it's like you know, kicking fans out who paid you know ton of money to do everything yeah. that entire weekend, and you know they get a two hundred dollar voucher for their Formula One store for merchandise. I think a sweatshirt goes for like one hundred and twenty bucks. Like it's yeah, their it's... their stuff ain't cheap. No, well then then you get guys lining up to go out to practice like at two o'clock in the morning or something. Yeah. And then they're kicking fans out and literally city police and security are running around chasing people out of there. I mean, what, what, uh, leave them alone. Yeah. Like, like, I think like what cam you were down at the Chicago race, I think that was just well done. Like, sure. They had barriers and they had, you know, you had to have ticket access to certain areas, but there are other spots like, sure. If you can get there, go for it. And we just had general admission tickets, but like when they were doing like Xfinity practice and some of those videos I took, like there was like the bleacher seating, like there was somebody that was just there and said, yeah, it's, you know, you can go up there and watch for a while. Um, it's like for Xfinity practice and some of the cup practice, like that's, we just went into the seating. It was, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, it was, it was the Chicago street race was pretty well put together and i want to say i guess looking at what the f1 what f1 just put together last weekend i'd say nascar i think we maybe took for granted a little bit how well they put on that street race yeah yeah absolutely because like the other thing that came out of that too was like and again kind of talking about like f1 get involved like they were putting like the fog sheet up on the glass of the bridges so that nobody couldn't sit on the bridge and watch it. And they were putting tarps up on the fences so that nobody could peek in. It's just like, they were trying yeah. to do everything they could to limit the number of people that were watching their product. Well, For and free. so, yeah, absolutely. Not a knock on NASCAR either, or if you're trying to knock one goes for both. So at the NASCAR race, that was one thing. We had a hotel room that looked over right over the track and they had obviously the cement barriers and then they had the fence up, but then they had fence, you know, that went along the sidewalk sure. and NASCAR put up a cloth fabric along that fence. Well, 
to prevent people from being able to just stand on the sidewalk and watch. Well, is a cloth fabric with zip ties. How long do you think that lasted? Yeah, I think you're going to come across somebody you, that carries a knife with them. As you got a guy with a knife just running across the top. <laughs> takes it down, takes it down on Saturday as cars are on the track. Yeah. Sunday morning, you get up. They got it all redone again. And it was shitty weather, but you still got a guy running. Zoop. Cuts it right down. So it's like, yeah, it's just like at that point, like you're wasting money. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was surprising, like to have all that time to put together that race and you get into practice one and you got manhole issues, like yeah. And I guess I haven't dove into it. Like, was it a freak thing? Was it like? Did oh, it was a. In- it was it was a bit. Of, I mean, it was a. Lot, you had every combination that went with it because they didn't really do anything to secure all the manhole covers down. So it's just one of those, like the car hit it just right and it tore it up. And cause I mean, it damaged some of the concrete around, around that cover too. Yeah. Yep. It was just a culmination of all the things that you wouldn't expect to happen. I think. Yeah. yeah. Culmination and watch a couple million dollars go right out the window. Literally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that thing was just destroyed yeah so yeah, yeah. i don't know, like i said there, it, it, like another comment that came out at it from max verstappen this year's champ i was like yeah this is 99 percent show and one percent sporting event and i saw that i'm like yikes not a good look for the not a good look for yikes the when one of your drivers your championship driver is saying that yeesh yeah. that's a tough look The NASCAR feedback, like I felt, I felt like the outside of the weather, that was just part of my French ass for that weekend with the rain on Sunday. But, um, I guess I thought the general feedback from like drivers from the street race, I thought it was pretty positive, wasn't it? Or my, was there anybody that was that outspoken about it? I think they were more or less disappointed in the fact that SVG came in in his first race and just kicked their ass. Yeah, it wasn't. I wouldn't say the product itself from a a logistics or a race standpoint or any of the other stuff. I just think the fact that we had a foreign guy come into the sport and kick our ass, paddle, get our asses paddled by somebody that's never been in one of these cars and showed us what's up. I think that was their bigger gripe than anything. But I think the race itself was good. And uh, and like you said, it's NASCAR was dealt a very hard hand, especially with the weather that came in. And then not to mention like the Xfinity race was cut short due to the lighting. Well, the cup race was too. They were cut short due to the lighting and how late it got into the night. So I think NASCAR handled a good amount of that weekend as best as they possibly could. Was there things that didn't go right? Absolutely. You're going to have that with any first race event, especially a street course like that. But I think if you're comparing the two, I think logistically and leading up to it, I thought I think NASCAR kind of hit it out of the park compared to what Formula One did in Vegas. Yeah, I would agree. There's always something you can't control, and they did what they could. And at the end of the day, that's the risk you take, especially with a course like that where it covers so much area. Yeah. They just there's nothing you can do. That is the that is the bigger picture there. NASCAR controlled the controllables. Yep. The things that they could control, they had it down. They had it knocked out of the park. Um, and then just came down to weather, which sucks. But, um, yeah, never good when uh, your championship driver comes out and says this is more show than it is a supporting event. So, um, obviously – not a great look uh, for F1 and obviously some of the early reports that were coming out of there with what was going on with fans. Um, I was able to watch some sucks. highlights of the race just because I was not willing to stay up till midnight to watch that race, but uh, I watched the highlights. It seemed like the race itself was actually really good. It started off pretty, 
entertaining where you had the top two guys go off the track right out of the gate and kind of fight it out. Verstappen had a time penalty for, for causing that incident. There was a lot of contact to the race, a lot of bold moves and a lot of the turns on that race. Um, Verstappen, like I said, having to come back from the penalty to, to get the lead again. I think there were three different leaders in that race. So, it, like I said, it seemed like the race itself was really entertaining, especially with some of the dive, like I said, some of the dive bomb moves going into the corners for position. Um, it was just, I think it got marred by everything that happened around that weekend, but also some of the shots that they had, like the city Vegas all lit up and the cars going down the track. I mean, that was, those were some pretty sights to see, especially them coming down the strip. Yeah, that was pretty cool. A lot of the photos, especially at night, were just awesome. Yeah. It almost kind of reminds me like they raced at Circuit of the Americas earlier this year and they were doing uh practice to- like in the sunset of that and some of the shots he got on that were just oh, yeah. just prime. Gave you like top gun feeling type of thing. <laughs> like the old school type top gun like it, it was just so cool but they definitely know how to get the best out of the racing product that they put on, whether it's the shots that they do or, you know, like in-car cameras that they have, they have some of the best, I think, production of racing out there. Yep. Um, But yeah, overall, I thought it was a really good race from the highlights that I saw. So it was, it's, I, I could see him going back to Vegas again, a lot to learn off of it, but yep. we'll see what the city of Vegas wants to. Obviously, it all depends on the revenue dollars that are coming in, and that's ultimately going to decide what uh, what happens with that race. Yeah, I think like I said, um, big learning curve, big learning experience for them. Um, and hopefully, like you said, they learn enough and they put on a good enough show that they'd get another crack at it uh, to do it again next year. And like you said, once you start doing some of this stuff, the be, the next question is how do you make it bigger? How do you make it better? And so, um, yeah, definitely is interesting uh, what these series can do, just showing up to a city and being able to plop a racetrack down in the yep. middle of a city and yeah, cars going over a hundred miles an hour um, in a city. And so, yeah wild so any final thoughts on 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 the f1 weekend or uh dirt late model scene no i'm i'm ready for this next part yeah Yeah. it's a pretty quiet weekend but i'm still on my high i just want to mention this real quick i know we put it on the socials but i had the menards drivers up at the corporate offices this past week and that was a blast it was really cool to see everybody come up they were signing autographs taking pictures with everybody that came through lion and celebrate and obviously blaney's championship so that was that was really cool to see i know i sent you guys a few photos as as the day was going on so fun fact i actually had somebody call me who was kind of helped putting the put the whole thing together he called me like at oh what the hell did he time he called me like 12 o'clock or something like that he's like hey come down here real quick i'm gonna give you a pretty exclusive look at all this stuff that come in so like they had the car set up and like the trophy and all that so like i got a picture with the car before anybody else was down there so being a big race fan pays off you get exclusive access to certain (laughs) areas before everybody else that's pretty (laughs) badass yeah Yeah, that is that is awesome and like I think like that in-car camera shot that I had, I'd bet you I would not have been able to get that if I would have done it like during the event. So for sure. But no, yeah. it was a good cool time. They like I said, signed a lot of autographs. It seemed like they had a good time while they were there too. Old John Menard was really happy to have everybody there. Yeah, that was that was a good time. Hey, it pays off to be a diehard racing fan. And when, got a when, smile when out of Paul. And got a smile out of old Paul. <laughs> when uh, when when your coworkers know you're just a diehard race fan that you get to come down and get get the exclusive look yep. beforehand, that's that's what race fans look forward to. And that was ironically like that was the wild part too. Like at the Chicago Street Race, so their pit where their car was parked under their tent was like right was on a side street over here, and that was obviously fenced off with security guards. And there's about a 25 yard gap or a 20 yard gap 
where they would walk from there. And then here was the side street over here and you walked into this and that's where all the hallways were on the street. And there were security guards on that street. So there's like this 20 yard gap between streets and that NASCAR shirt that I got with all those signatures. Yeah. When you talk about it pays to be a race fan. I was actually granted these guys walk with purpose, like, cause they know if they stop, you know, whatever, but I was dumbfounded by the amount of people who either don't care or don't know who these people were, because it was like, I just stood there and just walked back and forth just out there trying to scalp signatures. <laughs> I see. Yeah, somebody, it's like anybody like, that came by, bam. And I had Carolyn with me and she would, she doesn't know who, what they are, but she would just, anybody that looked important, anybody that looked important, she'd just be like, how about that guy? <laughs> and she spotted the first one. It was Willie B. And yep. I'm like, and they just are like, we got to like, go. We got to yeah, go. I'm Move just it. like, like you said, but like, I was actually kind of dumbfounded. It's like, do people not realize like, or did they well, not care? Or like, I felt like that. I felt like that when we were at Cedar Lake, because obviously, like you know who all these, the, like all the dirt guys, the late model guys that were there. But like, I only know a handful. I'm like, I know JD, I know Nick Hoff and stuff like that. I'm like, God, I don't know who the hell these guys are. So like, you're just going up to Oh, that's so and so, and that's so and so. Oh, we got to go over here so we can see if we can catch this guy. And, well, uh, and I think well, here probably is the other part of it. Most people probably don't idolize those people the way we do. True. <laughs> True. We we were there for one sole purpose, and we had done a research for over a year waiting for that moment. Uh, 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 yeah. So it's for us, it's it's Jesus and race car drivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so. Kidding. Uh, oh yeah that's yeah that was awesome some of those pictures you sent uh about the old menards thing was yeah definitely cool and to have oh, you know all those guys blessed. all those guys that all three of us kind of look up to and you watch every weekend and you're like sometimes it's surreal just to be in the same room with them and like look at them and be like dude i watch you every weekend on tv and it's like oh Right there you are, right before my eyes. So I got to tell you the story real quick before we move on to the next topic, too. So they did a little Q&A while they were there, too. And I think just because, like, you know, they've Please been up there. Please tell you grabbed a hold of that, Mike. No, I didn't. No, they didn't do any, like, Q&A with the fans. Like, it was – they had, like, their PR guy do, like, ask it all these questions. But, like, so, like, they asked, like, what was your welcome to NASCAR moment for each of the guys? And uh, the one that really stood out was Austin Cedric. He said, I – I went my made my first truck start in Martinsville. And he said, this is like however many years ago. This is and he said back when Crafton was a two-time champ. <laughs> and he said, and he asked, he's pointed at Crafton specifically. He's like, I'll see if you remember this. So he said he was at practicing at Martinsville. He's just trying to get comfortable in the truck and like get familiar with the track and all that. It's his first time out there. So he's kind of just doing some slow air laps around the track. Shaking and Matt Craft. Matt Crafter just blows his doors off going to the three or something like that in practice. And the next thing you see, is you just see the big old bird get poked out the window in the middle of practice. He's like, what? He thought that was like, do I really deserve to be out here? And I mean, everybody just started laughing. And Matt's like, yeah, I don't remember that one, but I probably did that to you knowing me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Well, are we ready? Are we ready? I'm ready. I'm, I'm excited for this one. I was ex I was excited for the last week's. So that one turned out really good. I'm just ex as excited for this one too. Mm -hmm. Just because I like I got a feeling we're all kind of going in different directions with this deal again. Yeah. <clears throat> I I I think I'm gonna have one that's gonna blow that's gonna throw you off a little bit. Okay. Well, right. our, after we get done, let's run. Let's rip through these, and then we'll we'll definitely have some post race kind of we'll kind of like we'll, last we'll time. We'll we'll go around. We'll say what we each kind of th thought. If it's different than what we expected, what the race team was, and then uh, we'll just go a little round table of what were some of the series you were, you know, contemplating, and then uh, you know, if we don't cover it, you know, ultimately what what came down or what led you to to go racing in the series. So 
yeah, uh, obviously on this week's episode, like I mentioned, uh, the pit crew's going racing. Um, and we got one blanket statement. You're going racing, unlimited funds, pick a series, and uh, go racing. So without further ado, uh, the Jack man's going first. So, um, and he treats this shit like a research project. So um, <laughs> he, he can he, spend a lot of time on this stuff. So, so he's going to set the bar really high and then, uh, that bar is going to be at the floor once you know, we, uh, pull, Cam, pull me and you, out. we have full time jobs. We actually have, you know, stuff to do and I still have a full time job. I just, <laughs> you just fuck off a lot. That's what you do. God damn it. Come on. <laughs> All right. Um, no, I, I definitely could put a lot more time into it. And uh, after at nights when I'm just sitting around instead of watching, like I could easily pull up the laptop when Monday night football's on and like, yeah, so I got stuff together. Definitely put put some more put more effort into it. But about um, my Sunday night, that's what my Sunday night kind of consisted of. But anyways, uh moral of the story, Jack Mancallen is gonna set the bar really high for us, um, as he did last week with his pain scheme. And um let's go from there. So uh Jack Man, uh you can share your screen. Um the floor is yours, and where are we going racing? All right, here we go. All right, here it is. Uh, a B transport. Okay. Yep. So hold on slide. Oh, we go slide. We got te- some technical difficulties here. I gotta <laughs> gotta get this to to go slide slide. Yep. From beginning. Okay. Here we go. All right. So this is what we're looking at. So now I want you to take note that there's going to be two titles to this. So, um, as you notice at the top here, we have Big Money Motorsports. So this is the kind of a precursor as to what series I'm going to follow. Um, we got big money motorsports and how we're going to get to the racetrack is through KB transport. So keep that in mind. Um, as we kind of go through the next seven slides of information here, um, I'm your owner operator and the shop is going to be located out of Madison, Wisconsin. So, um, a little bit of a relocation for everybody. So we're going to be full time with this. This ain't just a, a gig here. So. Um, I present to you our premier sponsors that are going to be on the car. Some of these correlate to one another. Very coincidentally, they all string together in some fashion. Um, if you don't know what the annex is, that's a great location to visit down here in Platteville, Wisconsin. Um, drinks. Yep, you go to the annex to have one of these lights, as you might see. Usually the morning after you visit Quick Trip. <laughs> And then there's probably Culver's for lunch, but uh, I, these would be premier sponsors that you would find in big locations on the car. Um, I just felt like those were in need of mentioning. So who who's on the crew? Who's traveling? Who's doing what? And who's going where? <clears throat> I kind of teased it a little bit. It, uh, it, it leaves the avenue open and uh, the next slide will tell it, but <clears throat> I am your driver all in told. <clears throat> How we get there and what I'm the wheel man. Um <coughs> Cam with the You're right there, key. bud. Yeah, I'm, we're good. Um Cam with the K is the spotter. It kind of leaves it open. Caden, I know you're watching out there somewhere. You're you're the tire and chassis guy, which it's a scary situation there. <laughs> and then at the bottom, you know, Chase, who's gonna be one of our guests here at some point in the near future? He's just He's there to really just give you a pat on the back when shit doesn't go right, to be honest. He'll, he'll whip you up a good little meal. You come out of the car and you're pissed off. He'll hand you a cold one and he'll get you right coming off the track. The so. cold one is going to be where the food comes in. He's going to give you that liquid diet. <laughs> that too, for sure. So I know he's watching somewhere too, but uh, don't we didn't forget you, buddy. Don't you worry. <laughs> you get to go along for fun, basically. Um uh, <laughs> So this is what this is what makes up our our uh, travel crew that'll be getting going to the racetrack every every weekend. So here's a little sneak peek, and Van Grohl, this picture should look familiar to you. Hot damn, that's a good pl- track to be at. Yeah, so that's yep. So this is the surface. Now I'll mention you. This is just the surface. That's so we're going asphalt racing somewhere. Here's what we're going with. Uh, this for those of you that haven't seen, and I kind of went into a little bit on this whole deal and what I wanted. 
Uh, we're going to go asphalt, super late model racing. Um, we uh, I even went into the chassis and the motor selection. I, I went a little bit out there on doing all this. We've got the traditional five-star body with that sleek nose, and um, that seems to be the what everyone's running this year. So we're going to have a, a Reed Chevy is where, what we're going to be running um, <clears throat> with that traditional five-star body um, going forward. This is how we're getting there. This is what is going to get us to and from and up and down the road. And I don't know why I like the look of that square nose Peterbilt with the matching toter and it's chromed out and the whole works that baby all lit up going down the road at night. That's how we're getting there. And we're going to have two cars stacked in there. So we'll have a primary and a backup side. So if something goes haywire, we got ourselves another option. Because when you see where we're going, we might need two options. Um, so that's how we're getting there. This is where we're debuting. Okay. <laughs> so we're going. Wow. Wow. <laughs> roll, them, roll them all. We're, we're, we're in route as we speak. Um, oh, imagine just, somebody listening to this podcast and showing up to, this, to the track hoping to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what that car is going to be put together with the body panels that are sitting behind them <laughs> yeah, yeah no kidding but uh you know obviously maybe on the way we stop and do a little testing somewhere maybe shake it down and make sure that we're good to go but um i i felt like this is a, a race you know that we'd feel comfortable getting into making a few laps you know seeing where just really where we stack up um, so I felt like this was a, a decent opportunity to show what we're worth. Um, okay. This is what we are doing as a race team. We are not following a series. And if you notice these top three bullet points here, Ooh. if you notice these races, these all should be fairly easy to qualify for. The snowball, the sheer, the slinger. You have two of the hardest races to qualify for the first three three races there. Dixie what are you Land. talking about? Dixieland, Oktoberfest, Winchester, Money in the Bank, Red Bud, the Big Lee, the Rattler. Basically, so here's kind of my idea with this. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say this. I'm taking this freelance approach with the idea of I'm recreating the JD of 2022. We're just going to hammer all these big ones and go make a whole bunch of money running all the crown jewels. No, because we live around here in the upper Midwest, or Wisconsin, as they would say, uh, Midwest Tour, if we don't have to run any of these big ones, maybe they run together, we don't know. Um, we could hit some of the Midwest Tour races, or we could run a lot for five at the Dells, but that would all be pending some of these other big ones. But, you know, you look at it, the Dixieland is Midwest Tour. Slinger Nationals on a Tuesday night. We'll run that one. Joe Shear traditionally has been a Midwest tour. Snowball so is the Grand Gandrud race. Yep. Um, all American 400, Winchester 400. Those are all after the Midwest tour is wrapped up. Uh, Oktoberfest, that is Midwest tour. So we would obviously run that. Um, but then some of these other bigger ones, I think we would go hammer those. Um, start working on that but you know we hit the dells here and there go run some of the other midwest races go run at state park and um elko some of these other tracks that we look that we've just enjoyed for um midwest tour stuff following uh kind of uh, our some of our favorite tracks when you talk about madison and slinger and wir and Oktoberfest is a big one um, some of those tracks that we really enjoyed being at. So that's kind of a look at our schedule. Very rough. If you map it out, there's a lot of travel time between a lot of these races. So we'll be on the road quite a bit. Um, and I really only think there's one last thing to do. And that's to show you what we're going to stuff in the box to take to the track. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Could you see this thing coming out on the racetrack? I mean, with the Tuesday track talk on the hood, I mean, it's over. We're in. 
it's we hey, this goes back to the in. the paint schemes from last week. It's one of those like you see that car rolling, it's like, all right, we're racing for second. <laughs> you bet. I mean, that's what they're all saying when we get to the derby. <laughs> 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 but no, I went on this. So we got obviously we have all of our primaries plastered all over this thing. You got you got the Miller Lite, you got quick trip on the quarter in the rear. You got, like the you got culvers on the roof. Yeah, culvers on the roof. When we get That's that drone like, flying around, people are yeah. gonna know you're from the Midwest. Um you got your contingency sponsors along there, VP Racing Fields, REI. Bilstein shocks, Weir's machine, who's your racing tire, five star bodies, um, McGee and KLR engine builder, all star performance. Um, you got them all over. Obviously, we're going to have to sponsor ourselves in some fashion when this podcast is bigger than beyond belief. Um, Reed Racing Enterprise is obviously a huge component to that of building our chassis and being really fast, just like um, we need it to be. Um, so that is, as David, some people would say, that is the shit box. So I present to you <laughs> Big Money Motorsports. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> that is fantastic. I, mean, I think what uh, we'll, we'll discuss it later on, but my goodness, what a yeah, lineup. Dude, for what real. a production. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's, I can just hear some of these super guys just shaking in their boots listening to this. <laughs> Ty Majeski racing for second. <laughs> oh that's no, that's that's right. obviously pending a, a massive travel budget. I, I kind of figured you were gonna go that route. A little surprised that you didn't go on the dirt side of it, but I'm not uh, surprised we'll, at either. We'll discuss that, but it was a it was a big All decision right. for me. So well, before we discuss any farther, Cam, you want to go second? You want me to go next? Uh, you can go second. I'm just finishing right. up the last. I was about to say you're you're making some changes now. You've seen somebody go. No, I just I threw I just threw a little picture in there. Uh, sure, a few pictures in there just to make it a little bit more visually. So I'm just gonna tell you, like, that, um, before I share this. The team name is going to be pretty bland, but the our team motto is, I think, what's what's going to really sell this team to to you guys. Oh God, <laughs> this ought to be good. Oh boy, okay. we All just right. want to race. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. So obviously, CVG Motorsports, pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, we're we're just a bunch of knuckleheads that want to race. That's that's what we are. So I'm taking a little bit of approach as far as how I'm going about, you know, introducing everybody. So we're just going to go straight to, oop, if I can get my thing to work here. What's in the shop? Oh, God. So we, kind of on the same line as you, we're going to be racing super late models. So the spot, there's another spot here for a reason. We'll get in, get into Ooh. that here in a little bit. Okay. So sticking with the uh, super late model here, here's what we're kind of looking at. So this top car here would be kind of the the primary car that would run a lot of the uh, higher paying, more prestigious type of races, where this bottom car here would be kind of your secondary races, um, you know, or weekly races that are going on. So uh, two car team, only one driver, kind of like a, a lot of the guys do. They have the two car system that they they run everything on. Uh, on the crew, it's a four to six man crew, kind of depending on the race. You know, if you do a little bit of the weekly, you can kind of not have as many guys with you. If you do the bigger races, obviously you want to have everybody you can all hands on deck Driver is undecided. I was kind of go, kind of go more along the lines of bringing a guy in that'll, uh, you know, kind of an up and comer type of guy, get his name out there, especially if we're going to have the equipment to run, um, since you kind of brought it up, I'm going to see if I can rattle off some uh, what we're running here real quick off the fly. So manufacturer, it is going to be a Chevy. We are going to do the SS. Um, I'm also probably going to do the five-star body. They've always had some pretty slick race cars. Um, on the chassis side, I'm probably going to go left-hander, get a left-hander <laughs> chassis in there. And then for the engine, I'm probably going to go with the Wagner Motors. Okay. So that's that's the uh, the the uh 
technical aspect of things. Obviously, I'm going through the list here. Spotter uh, would be myself. Kellen, you're going to be my tire guy. You're going to help me get everything set up on that. Cam, you're going to help turn wrenches as well. You're going to get down and dirty with everybody. Uh, on the merch side of things, we're either going to have Chase as our merch man. He's going to help design some stuff, or otherwise the sister's going to help sell. Uh, and then the chef slash the moral support. I mean, you got to have the parents and the grandparents. You got to bring them in with you. They're just going to help you out. Um, talking about schedule wise and kind of the races that we're running here, there's no real set debut. So I'm kind of setting 2024 as my, as the debut of the team here. We're mainly running Midwest tour, kind of sticking with the Midwest type of theme. Uh, the Midwest Tour Tundra Series, the Alive for Five. We're going to try and run the full weekly schedule at WIR on Thursdays and possibly Slinger on Sundays. Get the okay. weekly schedule in there. Um, and then track schedule specials or premier races. I think you kind of cover a lot of them. The Slinger Nationals, some select ASA Stars races, possible snowball entry, depending on how the year goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh we're doing we're running the entire Oktoberfest weekend. We're gonna be there Wednesday through Sunday for that sucker. I threw in the Rattler 250 Governor's Cup. I could definitely well throw in the Red Bud uh uh Governor's Cup. The what the hell else did you have on there? Bigly, you know, definitely run some of those as well. Those are gonna be kind of the same lines as the snowball derby. It all kind of just depends on how the year goes funding sponsorship all that jazz and kind of schedule with everybody on there so it's kind of what the the schedule is looking like there uh, i'm going to piggyback off of your kb transport you're going to help me on the transportation side of things so we're going to have that nice rig going um, and i think it's really going to come in hand especially with the second part of this what's in the shop because we're going to have a lot of equipment that we're going to be hauling around because the other part that I really want to get into is the dirt midget. Oh, Ooh, we're going to go dirt midget racing. Wow. Wow. That's all, a, yeah, I, that's that was a that was a 180 on us. So I do want to thank iRacing as well for helping me design these race cars and getting something <laughs> onto here as well. I may or may not bought the bought the midget on Sunday just so I could make the paint scheme. <laughs> So now I've got, I got to go race it on that sucker. So <laughs> kind of kind of the same idea there. Only sticking with the one car on this one. Uh, we're going to basically run the Midwest. Uh, they do have the, and I'll talk about it kind of schedule-wise, there is a midget series that runs around the Midwest. So we're going to primarily stick with them. Uh, the crew pretty much stays the same. Uh, the stick man in this scenario is going to be myself, tire guy, Colin, you're going to be my man, wrench turner, cam merch same deal and and you know same deal as far as the crew goes um you know when we get to maybe some of the bigger races we could probably bring a couple extra hands over maybe deets and he can help out turn some wrenches you know we'll we'll play it by ear as far as maybe we can get noodleman to come come turn wrenches for us too who knows <laughs> we'll consider him we'll consider <laughs> maybe <laughs> um as far as the schedule goes we're kind of sticking more midwest with these ones like I said, they do have the Badger Midget, Midget Auto Racing Association that runs at a, a handful of tracks. They run a lot at Angel Park, and Angel Park, Wilmot, and Sycamore are kind of the heart of their schedule. They run a lot of races there, so we're kind of go. We're going to do a lot of that. I've always just enjoyed watching midget racing. Um, I think it's some of the slickest racing out there, and I think it's always good to have a little bit of a dirt background with anybody. So I think we can kind of do those races that were maybe not going anywhere. Or if I got some up and comers that I maybe want to maybe throw in a second car, I'm going to throw them in that dirt midget, get them some dirt experience before they hop over to asphalt. Um, we'll run maybe some USAC races that end up coming up in this direction. I know they got a couple that run down to Illinois. We'll maybe make the trip down there. Um, the extreme midget series, the same thing. We'll maybe run a couple of them races that come up, up into the Illinois area. Um, and then obviously I think the two big ones for them is the BC 39 at Indianapolis and then Chili Bowl. I mean, what the hell? They're both great experiences. You gotta you can't win it if you're not in it. So give her, there, <laughs> give her the old community college try, as I would say. So two <laughs> two racing fact, factions is what we're racing on. Uh primarily hammering in on the super late model. 
uh, but also throwing a slinging a little bit of dirt here and there as well too. So um, that's what the that's what the race team's looking like at, at old CVG Motorsports. Oh, okay, all right. I'm gonna hold my thoughts. <laughs> well, let me get mine. Save the the best for last. Here looks like. That was good. I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. Like I me. said, I figured I was going to throw a little bit of a wrench in there. and Oh, boy. This should be good. Um, present. Top right there, bud. A little more. Two more over. One more. Slideshow. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, obviously, as you can see, uh, we got a pretty lame this is all subject to change we've got a pretty lame b2 motorsports right now um yeah i don't have very many creative juices in this big brain so um this is what we're rocking with right now um just b2 motorsports so um let's get right into it obviously i i don't quite have the uh actually let me just pull it up here quick I think I'm going to throw you guys for a little bit of a loop here. We need some Jeopardy music. All right. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting going. Okay, so, yeah, obviously, as I said, we have B2 Motorsports. Um, obviously not... This is going to be probably subject to change here um, once we get um, the best the best ideas come to you when you're not trying to think about them. So um, I'm just going to ponder this for a little bit yet and uh, see what comes to mind before we make it official. Anyways. Crew. Um, obviously, this will give you guys a little bit of precursor. Um this is my team. I'm driving this thing. Um, <laughs> so you're either with us or against us. Um, I was really scratching my brain here about, about the crew chief and who deserves to be the crew chief. And I can't believe I got Kellen's big brain as the crew chief. But <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to it, um, yeah, he feel like out of anybody that i know he knows the the ins and the outs of a race car so um pretty pretty scary but uh kellen's rolling with the the crew chief um tire changer uh pretty straightforward van grill uh you're on tires um you'll be cutting tires as well so um okay hint hint uh stick man i, I figured i uh, anybody um bringing pops along too um yeah he's, he's gotta be tag he's gotta be tagging along with us at the racetrack he'd probably be pissed that we're throwing up throwing him up against the fence getting all dusty like he's gonna be right in there <laughs> but uh no obviously i want pops to come along so dad would throw him dad out of the stick man um team manager and merch um obviously carolyn's hitting the road with me so uh, she's just going to oversee the operation, uh, keep everybody in line. And then I was thinking, well, if dad's coming along, mom could help with the merch trailer too. Mom can talk to anybody. So I was about um, to say, it's the keeping in line part that really, yeah, that's so, the stressful part of it all. Yeah. So um, Carolyn will come along. She'll be team manager, just uh, oversee the operation, catch anything uh, that we need, we need to get in order. And uh think mom will probably join in on the merch merch side of things and then uh yeah we're bringing chase along um knows nothing so i'm gonna stick a gopro in his hand and, and tell him to get lost <laughs> so, go so, get stuff so, so so we're bringing chase along on the crew um <laughs> that's, that's when you tell him you, you turn that gopro and you put that on your hat and it doesn't turn off until you lay down for bed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um so yeah so yeah i'm bringing chase along he's gonna be the media guy um 
obviously he's got a marketing degree. So um, if all goes as planned, we should be able to land a couple big sponsors bringing him along. So um, <laughs> he's got, he's I got, think he'll just be happy that he's involved. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> he's got two jobs. <laughs> Go pro and get content and land us a big sponsor. Those are your two jobs. Um <laughs> And uh, definitely was a little bit leery bringing him, bringing Chase on the crew for the media because uh, with the first experience we had with him um, at Cedar Lake was deaf, was not impressed um, at 1130 when he was tapping out saying he wanted to go home. Um, <laughs> buddy, the I think somebody are dived open a little fit. bit. I think somebody dived a little too heavy into the, the beers. <laughs> buddy, yeah. buddy, the pits open in 15 minutes and you're ready to go home. Like, so, uh, yeah, I was not not too impressed with that performance to start, but uh marketing guy, uh, stick a GoPro in his hand and <laughs> tell him to get lost and we'll see him at <laughs> see him later that night. Um, oh my god. Um, some of the sponsors that are um gonna be getting coming along coming on board with us. Uh, our our main sponsor is gonna be Boot Barn. Um great store, great products. Um, so boot barn. Um, also was chopping it up and uh, know somebody um, that is got a huge backing by Nutrient Egg Solutions, um, Jonathan Davenport. So um was lucky enough. Uh, he got us in the door with Nutrient Egg Solutions. And then uh, VP Racing Products, Hoosier and Base Racing Fuel um, are all coming on board uh, with this uh, team. So without further ado, I think you guys got a pretty good idea. Um, we're going dirt racing and uh, we're going racing with the world of outlaws. Um, so obviously on the left, um, I guess uh, first and foremost, why world outlaws over Luke soil um, strength, the schedule, looking at the schedule. Um, I like the world outlaw schedule better. Um, I love the, the Midwest swing. And uh, as Chris Madden complains about, all the midwest race races uh i love them so um that'll be good for good for the racing team um who are going to going to be in the midwest in wisconsin so um obviously a lot a lot of races in the midwest will be good for the team um so i like the straight i like the, the strength of the schedule um i like the tracks that they're at um if anything's like the video game that i drive i uh, should have success early so um and then uh, um obviously uh they they got their word cut out for them so uh world outlaws is kind of ponied up and said we're going to start paying more uh for these races so obviously they're doing their part no shortage of money so um we're going to be another benefit of um going racing with them would be the increase in their payouts and then lastly, one of the things I thought was um, best chance to win early. And I don't want to disrespect the the world outlaw, but um, look, I don't want to have to race against Jonathan Davenport and Hudson O'Neill every week. So, <laughs> so we're going where they're not. <laughs> we're going where they're not. Um, <laughs> we're going to have to deal with Bobby Pierce, but um that's fine uh definitely just don't want to race against some of those guys in the, the lucas oil series so um rtj completely forgot about him uh yeah we don't want to deal with any of those guys so <laughs> so we're just we're just going where they're not <laughs> um and then on the right as you can see uh the car we're going with a longhorn chassis uh if you can't beat them join them uh, everybody is running the Longhorn, so um, <laughs> I feel like if we're going to try to win, uh, we got to do what winners do, and that's run a Longhorn. So, um, under the hood, there, uh, as you can see, we got Clements Racing engines that are going to be coming on board with us, giving us the HP under the hood. So, uh, again, best in the business, and then uh, Bilstein shocks. Uh, again, another another great great shot company that helps uh, out a lot of uh, the top dirt guys. So, 
And then lastly, um, wow, what a picture. Um, uh, this is just, I don't know why I love this paint scheme so much, but uh, this is going to be something we're, we're going to aim for of some, some sort of version of this. Um, I love this paint scheme. And so that is going to be, um, I would say the structure, but not the color scheme. If that's the right wording. Yep. Okay. I got you. Yep. Uh, yeah. So obviously I don't quite have the, the in-depth, um, debut hauler um all that all i know is uh we we'd start january 17th in volusia for speed weeks and uh take a trip down to florida spend a month down there and uh well we then we can get then we're off <laughs> then we're <laughs> off and rolling and uh you two looks like you guys are you guys are riding together so um yeah i'll find I'll have to find a way to uh, purchase that hauler that Jonathan Davenport's got up for sale for eight hundred and thirty-five thousand. I was gonna say, Kellen's really got it set up. He's gonna just be our hauler guy. Yeah, <laughs> regardless. Yeah. Yep. No, I I was just gonna say, Kim. He just posted that for sale this morning. I think so. If it's probably available yet, I wouldn't think it's gone yet. So if you give him a jingle really quick, we could have it ready to go by the first of the year to get us down there. Get out my credit. Get out my credit card for a down payment. Oh my god! <laughs> how much? How much you down paying? How much you financing? <laughs> what is that? The twenty eight percent APR that you got on that card? <laughs> that eight hundred ninety five thousand dollars turns into about two million really quick. <laughs> um oh my god yeah yeah um oh what what is um yeah i I was kind of surprised or not surprised but i guess when i first thought about it i'm like yeah i'm definitely going this oil late mile racing but then i was like started digging into the the schedule in the midwest swing wisconsin minnesota Illinois, like World Outlaws is in the Midwest a lot. So yeah. being in the Midwest. Yeah, the other thing I'll tell you is um when you're out there for hot laps, I'll just have the PS4 loaded up on the TV. And when you come back and you tell me what you need, I got the setup ready to go. <laughs> it's simple. We'll be doing hot laps at the same time. Uh, the adjustments, you need a little air pressure. You need a little right rear shock, a little left rear shock. <laughs> oh my god. We're gonna have to get like those racing sims that we saw at Cedar Lake and just have that sucker sitting in the trailer. Yeah, no kidding. Dude, I you come back and you tell me what you need. I got you. <laughs> you got yeah. you got the well, shocks, you got... everything's laid out. You just need to park and sit. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Oh my Kelly, god. You got, you'd have all day to sit on that simulator in the trailer and get that thing right for those two hot laps. So, yep. so oh, we got all day. So <laughs> we'd be we'd be hearing the ten minute horn to go out for practice, and I'd be like, "Hang on, I just dropped a half a second, but I changed all four shocks and tire pressures and bump steer and the whole thing." Hold on, we're gonna be late to hot laps. We might not even make it, but we're gonna be fast. <laughs> oh, so man. yeah, obviously, uh, I guess I was not surprised um i guess i kind of expected old uh tire changer to go i thought he was going to hit us with something oddball like he's going xfinity racing so funny you say that that was third on the list (laughs) was xfinity what was i thought about it i'm like god xfinity is not a bad series to hit but i'm like you know what nope i super late miles and the dirt midgets two uh what was two on the list if Xfinity was three. What was two? Uh the dirt midgets. Your top two. Yeah. Cal, what was what were your top three? Oh, uh, honestly, I you're gonna you're gonna laugh at me when I tell you this. You know what was in my top three? Dirt modifieds. All right. 
I the dirt mod scene was that it, third or second? It, it was second. No, what was third. I was about to say? What's the other one? Like, dirt what's super. the other dirt oh. supers? Sure, but mods was my number three. Amateur hours, we call it. <laughs> well, um, I mean, hell, look at Kenna Wallace at Gateway last year. For some reason, dude, the I just. The, the mods just really intrigued me. And I, like, I started looking, I'm like, God damn, we could go, we could go with sort of mod racing or we could go US MTS and go chase some of those series. Like you could be, we could be running the same. We'd be running Cedar Lake that whole, that weekend. We could go run. We'd Masters be running every division. Week. Yeah. <laughs> we got a midget. We got a mod. We got a super. We got nobody to turn wrenches on them, but we got three cars. To <laughs> we got wh- whoever is not on the track is turning wrenches. <laughs> yeah, but like that was that was one that in that probably comes as a surprise to you, but I thought about the mods a little bit. Mm. So, Cam, what was your top three? Uh, I guess not, not even say top three because I guess. One was it was dirt late model. So yeah. one was just deciding what the series was. Two it was gonna be surprising. I don't know why it's why the dirt scene is why I'm enjoying it right now. But two was gonna be a wing sprint. And I think that's one at, that I think all of us are kind of we're leaving out was the wing sprints. And oh. looking at the Looking at going to high limit racing next year. So that was one of them. That was number two. And then number three was it was probably going to be a asphalt super late model. And it's going to be a local, you know, what you guys got going on. And I guess, I guess this is probably not great of me to say anyways, but it's like, I just couldn't get myself to think to think about like going on a national like a NASCAR series. Like I don't know why, but when I thought about it, I'm like that just is not like just didn't trip my trigger. Well, I think like so, part of it too was like we were kind of thinking like the crew, and we were all thinking like it was the three of us. You get chased, we get like our family involved. Like I think that's what really steered our decisions. Got it. As far yeah. as what we're racing, hundred percent sure. I would agree. I would 100% agree. Absolutely. Because you get into that NASCAR and see, and it's like, okay, I don't think any of us are looking at tires or making turning wrenches on the cars by any means. So, I mean, we're going to have to bring people in. You got the engineers at the shop. You got, you know, all these other people that are, that are coming in. And like I said, I think just with us having sticking with kind of what we know and each other, I think that kind of steered our decision. Yeah, for sure. Man, girl, I think that crew chief, I, you got half an engineering degree. I think you might be half an engine. Half an engineering degree is is generous. <laughs> I've got more of a degree in alcoholism than I do engineering, <laughs> or is engineering? Sorry, engineering, as I say. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that I guess that I didn't even think about that too. But that obviously would have been one of the things. It's like. Well, how do you make it a family and friend operation when you're going, when you're getting, you're getting paid big bucks and you're told yeah. what and where you have to be in, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, that was, that was, that was interesting. And any, you, I you think, guys, I think we each kind of threw out, we, we threw a wrench in each other's plans or like what we kind of expected out of each other in some way, shape or form. Like Cal, I thought you would have been hundred percent sold on the dirt late model, honestly. I know I did not. I knew right. I knew last week when we decided this that he's going. Yeah. Uh, it was there. It definitely was there. Um, I yeah. I don't know. I for some reason that the when I decided that's where I was going, I for some reason the asphalt side just. That tripped my trigger, you know. I was yeah. like, "Yeah, that's what we, that's what I want to do." So, I guess, um, right now, I guess that kind of as we wrap this conversation up, 
quick hitters. What was it about dirt super late models or not dirt but super late models? What was it about an asphalt super late model? What was the deciding factor? Is it the schedule, the tracks you can run, just the racing in general? What I guess what drew you to this decision you made? Either one of you guys can go first. I would say for me it was bigger the tracks that we could run. Um, I agree with that. I think for me it was it it is Slinger, it is WIR, it is Madison, it's State Park, it's um it's the Dells. Um for me it was I think it was the tracks and and I think and, and bouncing off of that, you can you, you got Nashville, you got Berlin, you got New Smyrna, Five Flags, like you have all those other tracks too that you can hit with a super late. Yeah. Like I think and, that was part of it. Now, the other thing is when I was making my decision, as we start to look at our schedule that we're starting to craft together. Now, another big one for me that that killed me to not make that decision was USA Dirt Nationals at Cedar Lake, the Prairie Dirt Classic, Knoxville Nationals. We could oh. run to Eldora. Eldora is not that far. Um, the Dirt Crown Jewels that are fairly close. You want to talk about qualifying in for the Snowball Derby, Knucklehead down there is going to have to try to get himself into the, the World 100. He's going to have to try to get himself into the Eldora Million. He's going to have to do that part. Like, those were ones, too, because I could tell you what, I'd love to go run Eldora. So, uh, this, for me. It, it killed me to not say, you know what, we're going to run the Prairie Dirt Classic. So... I guess the deciding factor, not not the, I shouldn't say, well, probably the deciding factor. And this is probably, or maybe because I don't watch enough um, asphalt, super late model stuff, but why I love just the dirt late model scene so much is because you know you're getting two or three grooves at every single track. Or the majority of them. And, like, I guess I feel like, you know, you go to a, a state park or, you know, whatever, you're one lane around the bottom, you're bumping somebody, you're roughing them up to get around them. Like, you go to Cedar Lake, no. It's hammered down and you want to run it around the bottom? That's fine. You want to put that right rear up on the cushion and run the wall? You do that, too. So, I guess, for me, it's just like... I. The draw of I guess it would be the style of racing and just I mean you watch a race it's like when these guys get a run coming off you know two off the top side it's like like they go and they can get a serious run and so I guess for me it's probably probably the style of racing and just being able to I don't know that's I guess when I, when I when I think of it, like asphalt late models, like I I guess I don't know. I just feel like a dirt race; there, it's more action packed. And you know you're going to get two lanes. You know you're going to get one on the bottom. You know you're going to get one on top, and then you can try to run a middle if you have to. But I don't know. I guess when I think of like the short track racing around here, like yeah, you can get. At some tracks, and get two lanes, but I don't know. I feel like it's a lot of bottom feeders, and and I think that's why I threw the dirt midget into my shop too, which just because it kind of falls under that realm of it has a lot of good racing. You get the two grooves in there. Them suckers are tough too. If it, if it flips just right, it's like all right, all four tires are up. Send it out. I don't care. Keep going. So it's like I th this... I think they put on some really good racing. Um, but also it's like one of those, like, and I haven't checked the rule book at all to see how, how different they are at various tracks. But I think that's another one of those, like literally it's a, as long as you could show up, you could probably race the car that you have. That's one thing. And maybe this is due to my lack of research, but if, if the boys wanted to try to save a little bit of money and actually try to do some racing, like, like a, dirt, be a bad avenue a dirt midget 
Like you watch Chili Bowl, those guys flip three, four times. Yeah. Tires are up. Get a push, get a four wheel out there, push them, get yep. it going. Like you flip a uh, you flip a late model, you're done for the night. You flip a wing sprint, you're damn near done for the night. If you flip super late asphalt. asphalt super late model, yeah, you're you're done. You're for done long. for the year. There, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I I could see where like on the dirt midget side, it's a little bit better, uh, budget wise. I just like I, said, I just think they put on some damn good racing too, and I want to be any a part dirt of it. midget tracks around here. Yeah, Angel yeah. Parks and Prairie in Madison, Wilmot. Down by Milwaukee. I don't even know where the, some of them other tracks were at. I never looked to, to see where they're at, it's but cost to build a midget. I mean, that'd be something we'd probably have to look into, but no, well, Angel Park, they run they run weekly, they run midgets. regularly, really yeah. regularly. I think they hard part, I think they do they run on Sunday nights, I think. Yeah. I think they run Sunday nights, but they yeah, they midgets run weekly in Swamp Prairie. They put on that wing sprint show that one time. Uh, where we just Stop. tuned in and we're like, he I picked to win that race. Yeah, and he went, flipped it on and coming out of two. Yeah, can we can we chase a weekly title at Angel Park? <laughs> but yeah, that's that. Uh, Yeah, that was. Uh, I had an inkling Van Gogh was going to do something on the dirt. I didn't know what because he's. I can see he's starting to broaden his horizons a little bit. I fun see, fact. I fun didn't fact. Know. This uh, Thunder Hill Speedway that runs the Badger Midgets, they're in Menominee, up by me. Oh God! <laughs> it's a half hour drive from my apartment. <laughs> Twenty 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 Four Track Champion. Fuck. <laughs> uh the what the hell was it? That Plymouth dirt track that's over by uh Elkhart Lake. Yeah. Uh Kankakee, Sycamore are down in uh Illinois, south of Chicago. So they kind of hit like that mainly like that southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois area, but then you get a couple of central and northern too. So yeah. Yeah, that one threw me for a loop a little bit. I figured that would. Yep. I was really excited to show. That's why I held like that that second transition. Like I'm gonna hold that off hole, on this yeah. one. I really wanna. Yeah. yeah, that was good. That was good. Man. Any final thoughts on the cruise? Uh, the cruise uh, race teams and selections. There's a lot of faith in each other in our roles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> for not for. For being three not very intelligent human beings, <laughs> wow! Did we put a lot of trust in each other to turn a wrench on a race? I car think and... the only one we could probably rely on that'll do a halfway decent job is Chase. And whatever <laughs> yeah. <position. laughs> he has nothing to do with the race car itself. He's a hundred percent. He's a hundred percent. Hands off of the car. Yeah, he is. His, uh, I would say, reliability factor is, um, yeah, <laughs> not dependent on our lives at this point. Well, I guess, I, I guess we, we all, we all went with the same theme. Um, Chase does nothing to affect the on track performance. Yes, correct. So, and I think you would have no problem about, with that. I guess we all agreed on that. So. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, but no, that was that was a good idea. This was um, this was good. Yeah, I, that that was good. I was I was pretty certain Callum was going on the the short track around here, um, and then I was like ninety nine percent certain that that's where Van Gogh was going to because I mean he goes once the spring hits, once April hits, he's after track every weekend, so. And and two and some Tuesdays and Thursdays, yeah. It's literally like, all right, where are we where are you going next week? Yeah. Yep. Anyways, yeah, that was a good idea. Um, I wish I would had a little bit more creativity to be able to edit a car, but 
like I said, thank um, God for iRacing. Yeah, I just stick the credit card in and you got a pain scheme. You're goddamn right. <laughs> You're goddamn right. I need to pop the oh. steering wheel back on and actually turn that dirt midget if I went and bought the track. I did buy Chili Ball too, so I'll have to turn some laps at the Chili Ball. Maybe I'll do Ooh. that during that week. Oh, God. Yep. Yep. Anyways, well, um, wrapping up uh, the pit crew going racing, I see we got a few race previews. Um, race preview number one, Bill Bigley is at what, 128 at yeah. Freedom Factory? Who's hitting on that? And you got a host of Midwest guys going down there, which is awesome for us. I mean, just just a couple. You got Majeski, Jeff Storm, Michael Bilderback, Derek Kraus, Luke Fenhaus, Paulie Schaefer, um, Johnny Sauter is another one that are all going down there. So the Midwest or Wisconsin, even in that fact, is very well represented. Very well represented. But then you look at the other entries outside of him, you talk about national guys. You got Michael Hine, Tony Elrod, Jesse Dutilli, who ran well at uh, Governor's Cup. Or, yeah, the, yeah, the Governor's Cup. And then yep. Albert Francis, Jet Nolan, Stephen Nassie, Michael Atwell, Jake Finch, Jeremy Doss, Anthony Sergi, Jared Irvin, Steve Dorr, Derek Griffith. I mean, they got they announced today that they officially hit 50 entries. Um and honestly, when you look at it, it's a pretty good deal. I mean, it's a thirty thousand dollar to win race. It's four thousand dollars alone to set fast time, um, and then you got twelve hundred bucks just to start the race. That's on top of the fact that they're racing at the Freedom Factory for the first time in a long time, which um, used to be the was defunct at the time, uh, Desoto Speedway. Mm-hmm. So that's what the Freedom Factory used to be called. So, um, man, that's that that's a pretty cool deal in itself because I don't know. I I watch a ton of Cletus' stuff. I watch everything he puts out. That Freedom Factory deal, man, he's got a he has got an absolute kick ass setup down there. Um, and I I give kudos to him too for you know he definitely goes a little bit exotic with the racing that he does, getting to that like short track scene and kind of. Not reviving, but at least keeping the track alive and and keeping that you know that race alive as well. And he's this past year he's dipped more into it where he's had some some uh, outlaw late models. He he's had pro trucks, um, and now he's going to have super late models. Um, so he's SRL is kind of tapping into that that scene a little bit, which. If you want to talk about getting on a good scale and you want some publicity, get on a guy that's got four million followers on YouTube. Yeah. There you go. He says we got we got 40 plus on his video today. He says we got 40 plus late models coming on to race this weekend. We got to get the grass just right for this place for them guys to show up. Like he wants to give it the Roger Penske treatment. Yeah, it helps all of them because he has done such a great job with what he does on his own facet. But the SRL said, yeah, we want to go to the Freedom Factory. So yeah, it, it it's going to be a cool deal. I'm, yeah. I'm actually And trading. like one thing that really stood out to me was like Jeff Storm, like he said in his one of his previous years, he said like this is one of those races that takes care of the drivers too. Yeah. And that's what it comes yeah. down to. Yeah. That's, Absolutely. that's the business side of Cletus. Yeah. Like he, um, he's not, he's into racing, but he's a businessman too. And I think he understands how to do business um, the right way. And it says a little bit about the SRL as well. Um, Little uh, flashback to last year. Uh, Michael Atwell won that race via DQ of Ty Majeski. That was the race where he raced with the hollowed out bolts by accident. Well, that's right. That Noodleman admitted to that he he forgot those bolts were in there, and yeah. You know, so yeah, you know. no, that'll be that'll be a good one. I'm sure we'll have that tuned in when uh, the three stones and Chase get together and partake in some festivities. We'll call it. 
I don't know what that one's on, actually. I think that's on Race in America. Because the SRL... Yeah, what do they stream on? Good question, actually. Well, that might be a... uh, Not a lot of knowledge and a lot of questions. If I got to buy a pay-per-view, so be it. Is that Speed Sport? I could be. Yes, because I know they posted an article. So it could be. Very well could be. be. Yeah, it might be Speed Sport. Another thousand bucks if the pole sitter wins the race. Nice. Uh, it'll be a 28 car field. Pit Row TV. Okay. Pit Row TV or SRL Racing TV. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that, I guess I kind of didn't. That's a good question that where that streamed at, but we, that one for sure. So, again, it's going to be interesting because Supers haven't raced there. So, everyone's walking in there without any data whatsoever. They know a track length and they can watch videos from years gone by and years gone by or Cletus and stuff to see what the track looks like to try to figure out where the bumps are. So that'd be wild. Yeah. So yeah, obviously like you guys said, um, Wisconsin well represented in that. Um and good to see an asphalt race paying that kind of money not only to win but fast time and to start um so yeah obviously that's going to be a big race and 28 cars to start we got 50 entries already so talk about some big names that are potentially driving down there and not even going to make the show so um that'll be interesting but the other race preview we got got USAC turkey night yeah, it's a big another big Saturday night race. You know, hinted on the midget side of things. Um, no, the other big race. Uh, Kyle Larson just put his entry in for that one, so he's looking for his fourth win in the Turkey Night race. Uh, Justin Grant's in that one. He's always a a tough guy to beat. Thomas Meserol is in there. Uh, let's see, I'm just going through the list here. Spencer Baston's in there again. A lot of these guys are kind of getting getting their cars tuned up for. The big one, the Chili Bowl, that's going to be coming up here. Um, currently, 54 cars are on that entry list. So, again, that's going to be another one where those guys are going to have to work for for those positions to get in. And it's going to be a tough one to get in, but it's going to be a hell of a race. I know uh, uh, the Placer or the – oh, what the hell, wherever they raced at last weekend, that was a really good race. Um, Hangtown. Hangtown. That's Those right. Races. Yep, that's what I was thinking of. It was Hang something. Hangtown. Yep, that was a really good race last week. Um, hope looking to put on another another good race again this weekend. So keep an eye on that one. Um, should be a good one. Logan 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 CV's also there. Jesse Love. Uh, yeah, it's just gonna be a lot of a lot of good drivers there for this one as well. Entries, a few starting spots. Yeah. That's both of the previews. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, obviously, I another good weekend of racing coming up. So, um, I guess as we kind of wrap this thing up, got final thoughts? No, just previewing next week's episode. Yeah, I so, think we're gonna have another good one there. And it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be another one where we kind of see what everybody thought was was their races out of the year. I think we're gonna go in different directions with that one as well. So looking at looking at bringing on uh your top five races of 2023. And again, that's gonna be a it'll be a doozy to get you to five. Um 
There's a lot of races that can crack that list of. We're gonna we're gonna throw this stipulation out there as well. We're gonna go back to basically, you know, this week last year, so we can include the 2022 Snowball Derby in that list if we want to. Last year's Gateway Dirt Nationals, you know, we can go that far back as well too. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because that's what we were just talking about before I started. And I'm like. Well, one of mine is out already because I'm thinking Snowball Derby in two weeks here when they go around that. But uh, um, yeah, we'll throw we'll, that in the mix. So yeah, we'll give it give it a calendar year and uh, look back at it a year from now and say you got five races, which it's gonna I, be tough. Yeah, for real. So we'll be we'll be giving you the top five races of 2023. It's kind of a a good review of everything from dirt to asphalt to late models to midgets to sprint cars to anything that's got four wheels and goes fast pretty much hell it should be a cooler for all i know yeah it it's been been a good year so we'll get you some uh 2023 um 2023 in review is what it comes down to yeah thoughts no man this was fun that was good yeah the race, that was the race good. team was good that was that, that was uh that was good to see where we put everybody where we're going and <laughs> who's doing what <laughs> we're hitting that damn near everything <laughs> literally <laughs> literally everything a lot, a lot of knowledge but we got a lot of belief in each other so um <laughs> That's uh, the most important part. So, yeah. So we wrap this thing up. Um, another great episode. Um, had a pretty good idea. You two were going to go on the super late model side in the asphalt, and didn't realize you guys are going to be following each other around. But uh, it is what it is. So, um, yeah. And then next week, like you guys mentioned. Uh, we're going to be diving into the top five races in the last year. So there'll be some weeding out of some good races trying to get down to five. So uh, that'll be another good one. And we could also do what we did with the paint schemes. Here's the top 15. Let's try to narrow it down to here's my five. Here's your five. And here's your five. Let's try to get it down to five. See if we can agree on the top five races. But um, yeah, as we wrap this thing up, as always, um, give us a like, comment your thoughts on the race team, um, on our race teams, what we're missing. Um, is, is there any tracks we should be hitting? Because um, as our pit crew, we we don't want to miss any, any Crown Jewel events. So uh, if we miss any races, shame on us. But uh, yeah, give us a like, comment, subscribe. Um, Turn that bell on too, so you get notified as soon as the content's live. And from the Three Stones Pit Crew to you, um, we wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving, and we will see you next week. Oh.